Hi, this is Janos, it's Real World Audio, and today is not about the turntable, but it's about the loudspeakers. Yes. So, I have received a lot of uh, comments about the application of the uh, Cube Audio driver into the void pipe cabinet, and uh, I really wanted to answer those questions and I've been literally spending the past 15 minutes going through my videos on my channel page, the, the one that I can see as a creator and looking at the videos and, and questions and comments and trying to find those comments uh, which were about the various driver uh, applications and uh, the ideas what I could do and try out like Hoobs's idea to put a tweeter in the back uh, or ideas to put a port on the side and I was literally searching here for 15 minutes even my comments digest list and could not find a single one of those comments so you see that's the curse of making too many videos I have made like uh, a crazy amount of videos in the past week and and that's it I'm just like really just really it's quite beyond my capacity to answer the comments today I spent probably like three hours answering comments and guys this is just crazy this is would be like a full-time job answering the amounts of comments but this is what happens when I put out like two videos a day then uh, there's a lot of interest in the channel, there's a lot of new subscribers and uh, there's just such a massive overload of uh, comments and not just comments but emails as well, like really long emails. Guys, uh, I, I really appreciate, I really love it but I would need probably like 20 hours a day to handle the load of comments and emails and, and requests to deal with things I'm getting and sadly I have a full-time job and when I get home I also have things to deal with so it's, it's, it's really really totally out of hand but I, I really welcome all the all the excitement all the contribution all the engagement so now I'm using this time to answer these questions about uh, about uh, applications in for the driver and and for the loudspeaker how you could change or improve the sound Kintar was playing with his mouse that's it hey Kintar oh, come on he usually catches it he doesn't want to perform that's how cats are he plays when he wants to but no free performances <laughs> so where was I so basically one of the ideas was to put a, a tweeter on the back side of the uh, pipe and to have only like from 300 hertz up to 16 kilohertz and wire it in reverse phase to uh, create a better frequency dispersion and, uh, and uh, to make the drivers disappear more and have better high frequencies now i will uh usually i'm very diplomatic and and i'm i'm very uh, thoughtful about comments and and there's lots of things and lots of good ideas and actually this is a good suggestion and uh, and for many drivers which are like uh, medium level or especially introductory level full range drivers uh, that's a very good idea to maybe like have something i would actually try a, a, a tweeter or maybe a super tweeter, mount a super tweeter in the back and, and have it uh, fire actually in the same phase as, as the driver and, and just try alignments, try try opposite phase, try different placements for the super tweeter and, and it's a neat idea and, and but we need to use that when we have deficiencies with the driver, deficiencies with our primary source so it's a connect, uh, corrective, corrective measurement, and uh, how? And now, the, what I want to answer before we get into corrective measurements, first we need to establish 
whether we need it here or not. And I can report that in the case of this driver, we do not need any, any corrective measurements for, for the dispersion to make the driver disappear better or anything like that because I'm going to go OCD Mikey on you all and, and use verbiage that he uses for descriptions of his audio gear and his audio experiences and if OCD Mikey was making this video now he would be saying that these guys in this cabinet they image so good and have such a correct frequency response that if you heard them you would piss and shit your pants and I'm not kidding if you were come to come here in the room and sit there or sit there or stand anywhere and I would have uh, uh, your eyes uh, closed or put something over the eyes so you cannot see where the drivers are and as you put on music and as you give give you 10 chances to pinpoint where are the drivers you would not be able to point the actual location of the drivers because there are no clues to tell you what drivers are and it's totally uncanny because there's no clues when you sit there you, there's no clues when you sit on the floor there's no clues when you stand up and there's no clues when you are moving away from the sweet spot even like really far out the speakers with any any loudspeaker design using multiple drivers you move out of the sweet spot even especially off axis from in front of your uh, one of your loudspeakers you cross that line you can tell or gauge at least what, what is the position of the speakers and by moving around you can figure out where the sound comes from even if you are sitting on a sweet spot and, and it's trained on your ears and you can't pinpoint the drivers if you move about, yes, then you can pinpoint uh, but for these guys these guys and this one the pair of these it's impossible to pinpoint them and there's uh, no nothing related to the cabinet you can't tell with closed eyes how tall the cabinet is how wide the cabinet is which is the height of the drivers you can't uh, articulate any of that information they just image so ridiculously well and they do not have any uh, dispersion issues whatsoever and uh, and i have not found any problems in the high frequencies they have the best high frequencies of any driver i have heard and um yeah so that's that's my comment and observation on whether we need corrective measures and uh, and I, I would say we need no corrective measures at all to improve imaging to improve three-dimensionality because it's already literally on in a completely different ball game than anything anything else in the conventional loudspeaker world now i think one more question was that uh, why do i have the port on the front i could put it on the back or on the side so actually this i have it because uh, Paul Voigt's original design called it to be in the front and uh, and that actually has the effect that you see as we go let's let's look at the side what's happening inside what's it's doing to the air so there's a column of air that is uh, that has this thickness so the thickness is constant for the air that's flowing in the cabinet and that, that creates this constant thickness and the narrowing creates a laminated airflow. So all the mole air molecules, they are organized and are flowing in a sheet, basically. And that sheet, the, the pressure is just going up and down in that sheet. And that up and down motion is compounded by, it's getting wider 
and it's getting narrower wider narrower wider and when it gets to the base the widening then the airflow just turns around and then curves out into the room and then when, when opposite phase it goes back into the cabinet from the room so there's a laminated airflow going that way now if i had a port on the side then there's a laminated airflow and it's not going in the same plane but it has to make a curve so now instead of just this plane we are also invoking a, a 90 degree curve to the side with additional turbulence so here the turbulence when it goes in it's going to get laminated and, and the turbulence on, on the left side and the right side is totally equivalent now if you open it on the side then uh, the turbulence here in the front region and the turbulence in the back region are different and the turbulence here and the back very different so it's going to get at the, at the current equivalence in the airflow so all kinds of things and when you have these uh, internal little uh, turbulences they eat up energy and soak up energy also when you have uh, the airflow exiting here you have a clean 180 degrees phase difference between the output here and the output there and there you add an extra 90 degrees phase difference uh, for the sound so the sound instead of like propagating right there it has to uh, propagate from the side so it reaches you in a very different modality compared to coming from the front so you are going to get delay additional delay a microsecond or so if it comes from the side compared to coming from the front so that's going to slow down the perception of the base and, and it's not as good uh, and uh, and actually my mentor was thinking about that after i built the pipe that it might be a better way to improve the sound just because of the fact that then these port resonances that come up in the front which are in the mid-range then they go to the side and they will get absorbed and bouncing around on the walls so they don't hit you and uh, and that's why my tweak is to put a record here because that does the exact same thing so if the sound is coming out then the higher frequencies have that wavelength that they will be shunted to the side but the bass really the long 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 waves are going to get expanded into your room uh, much more efficiently and they won't be bothered much by that Thing because that's not, not going to limit the the pressure the uh, that uh, the the base frequency has the coupling between the inside of the pipe and your room and uh, and basically instead of rebuilding my pipe and having the slot on the side this does the exact same or well not the exact same thing but the same positive effect as, as putting it on the side would have on the improvement in the higher frequency domain but this time we keep the benefit of having it fired to the port and keeping it a millisecond or two closer to the, to the mid-range and to the higher frequencies so actually this is a better solution now uh, when i was a fledgling building void pipes i did read a report on someone building a void pipe a straight pipe just like this one and he built two cabinets one with the port in the front and one with the port in the back and he reported that the one with the port in the back sounded like crap and it was was a very good very bad thing to build and it did not work at all so after that uh, i decided i okay i'm uh, i'm i'm learning from my fellow colleagues fellow audiophiles and i'm not going to pursue that route anymore so i just built it the way paul void dreamed it up and uh, put the port 
in the front and and really I never uh, had any issues with it and and really all you need is just put your favorite record like that on the front and if there's any noticeable uh, colorations to the mid-range then that takes care of it but what I noticed that with the Fostex FE204 driver this makes a big difference placing it there versus not being there but with the FC8 driver it makes almost no difference to the overall sound if it's there or not the with or without the records the loudspeakers totally disappear and I'm not getting anything, any interference, any muddying in the mid-range, in the image. Uh, so I think that's it about now, just answering the VoIP pipe related uh, questions. And thank you for tuning in. Have a most amazing day. Bye-bye. Please like and subscribe.